Hey again, guys. You know what I like to do when I'm wearing my Roberto Clemente Puerto Rican jersey? I like to look at some baseball cards. Okay, guys, I wanted to have uh, an interactive discussion here. And uh, this is this may go a little long. Uh, man, I got all kind of things on my mind. I was going to go live and do it that way, but, you know, seem to get more views um, on a video than when you go live and it's Sunday and there's a lot of other guys that go live and I don't want to compete with the normal, usual stuff that goes uh, that ha that goes on on Sundays. I was watching a sports card investor short where he was at the National looking at rare Mickey Mantle cards with a dealer. And uh, I, I found kind of two things rather disturbing about it. Number one, he was pawning these off as rare Mickey Mantles. And the dealer was really pawning them off like Mickey Mantles you never see, right? And the two were the Dandy and the Red Heart. Uh, which his was drastically off-centered, although it was graded a five. And uh, I just got a little triggered because I, I, this guy has risen to the top of the influencer world in our hobby. He probably didn't buy his first card until 2020. And good for him. Like, you want to become an influencer, you want to make fancy YouTube videos and make money at it, more power to you. You want to flip cards, more power to you. This is America. You're free to do whatever you want. But I do, you know, I am concerned with protecting our hobby. And I worry that people listen to this guy. You know, somebody had sent me a, a video of his to watch where he overpaid probably three or $4,000 for a card, paid like fifteen thousand dollars for a card, it probably is worth maybe ten or eleven. In fact, I saw the same card, same grade on Facebook, selling for eighty five hundred, and he paid fifteen thousand and negotiated down for that and made it you know seem like a great deal. And then I watch him crack open and uh, well, first of all, he paid ten thousand dollars for a box of nineteen eighty eight Fleer. Those things, a few years ago, you couldn't give away. And then I watch him and his friend wearing latex gloves to open them because they're so concerned about the grades. They're going to send these in and make a killing. I don't know how much it costs to have all of those graded on top of the $10,000. But uh, then he reveals, and most of them are sevens, right? Try to give uh, 1980s cards away in, in a seven. I mean, you're not going to sell them for much. And uh, it's just like, you know, it gets, uh, it gets hard to watch this stuff. Uh, so you could tell in his video he's never seen these cards before. How are you a card expert? How are, <laughs> how are you telling other people what to do? Now, I went on, and th this dealer was, he was over hyping how rare these are. I went on to eBay just now, right before I made this video. Uh, there, were, there are 16 on eBay right now. There are, I think, 36 on eBay right now. I, I, don't, know, I don't think that's uh, uh, rare by anybody's definition. Interestingly, you know, these were issued in, uh, they were a mail-in offer. And uh, very interestingly, the company honored the mail-in until like 1970, which is probably why you could find these in higher grade. So then, um, you know, somebody somebody made a comment on my comment that maybe he's just pretending um, for the benefit of all his viewers that he doesn't know. And I'm like, what kind of cult answer is that? Like, you, this guy is such a god to you that you assume he's playing dumb for the benefit of all of us? Are you kidding me? So you may have seen my post earlier. Um, asking, do you collect cards or slabs? And I don't want that to be misunderstood. And it actually sparked uh, a really great conversation with TJ Mack and myself. Uh, because, uh, you know, somebody had uh, made a comment on, on that video. 
And he said, wow, those are ugly, you know, because they're low grade. I wouldn't ever want those. I'd rather have uh, like a high grade leader's card. And that's fine. You know, I'm the first person to say that this is your hobby. This is my hobby. I'm free to collect how I want. You're free to collect how you want. And um, I'm going to get into this in a little bit. But I, I see a lot of um, like people have their opinion and it's starting to get a little nasty, maybe. Like if people don't agree with what I think, you know, they're going to get uh, rude or upset. And, you know, that's not where we need to be going. So that's what's what sparked my um, my post because I'm, uh, it, you know, it makes me think. So what what that says to me is we're collecting slabs now instead of cards. And it's not right or wrong. Like if you want a, a mantle leaders card in an eight and that's more important to you or you like that better than a dandy in a two, that's your choice. You know, that, nobody going to fault you for it. It's just kind of, it just kind of blows my mind that that would be the mentality. But just because it's not what I would do doesn't mean it's right or wrong. Doesn't mean I should get upset about it, right? So, you know, one of the things that uh, we were talking about in that conversation uh, was, and I've seen it, I've seen it. I know Jake, um, Legends Never Die, just did a live on this. And I've talked about this a lot on videos over the years. Um, and there are a lot of other people that talk about like raw versus um, graded. And again, it's a matter of preference. You want everything graded? Knock yourself out. You want to collect all raw? Knock yourself out. Who cares? It's your collection. You know, it's your money. I mean, if you want to spend more on grading than you do on... that's You're right. That's your, your prerogative. Nobody's going to fault you for that. Uh, we shouldn't. But I think, you know, the hobby... I'm, I always try. I always try to do my best to look out... For the hobby. These influencers who just started buying cards a year or two ago and are all these people listening to them, that's bad for the hobby because if these people get burned, it's bad for all of us. It's bad for the hobby. Now, I said on a recent video, and this is truly my feeling, it, it, you know, I felt, uh, <laughs> I felt the same way about COVID. You know, everybody would say COVID, uh, COVID hurt the economy. No, the government's reaction, everybody's reaction to COVID hurt the economy. COVID didn't hurt the economy. So I don't hate or dislike grading. Guys, come on. I have all kinds. I have thousands of graded cards. I don't dislike grading. What I dislike is what it has done to the hobby. It has, it has created a lot of things that I don't like. And, and that doesn't matter. I don't have to like it but I'm just giving my opinion. And some of the things that I don't like is how everybody gets a, you know, a grade and they critique every little tiny thing of the card. I mean, isn't that what you had PSA do? They already critiqued it for you. Uh, they don't, I just feel like we're not appreciating the card itself anymore. That's one thing I don't like about it. The other thing I don't like about it is how it has uh, blown up money. Right. Like you could find a sharp raw one and pay a fraction of what you pay for a PSA three because it has made and eBay is helping in this and having to authenticate the authentication, authenticate, make sure it's a real slab. Uh, so, you know, you'll pay more for a PSA three than a, than a sharp raw one because you think all raw cards are faked or altered or whatever. They're like the devil. Now, I compare what, what's going on when you talk about all these new people talking about raw, defending raw, or getting into arguments over raw versus graded. I compare it to Cuba. And it's like when leaders get too powerful, people uprise. Now, PSA, they've graded fake cards and trimmed cards, and us collectors took it. They made us wait a, a year for our cards and us collectors took it.
They quadrupled their prices. And us collectors took it. And they have changed the hobby in a big way. Because the difference between a 9 and a 10 could be tens of thousands of dollars. And this is what's, you know, what people are chasing. They're cracking them out and resending and cracking and resending. And they're popping open a brand new pack and they got to send it in. Now, even though they can't tell the difference between a 9 and a 10 of a brand new card, it's got to go to PSA and they got to get a 10 because that's where the money's at. And I think a lot of collectors have now been priced out of graded cards and priced out of the hobby in some cases. And I think, back to my Cuba reference, is they're finally starting to, we've had enough, they're finally starting to mentally rebel uh, because they're getting priced out of the hobby that they love. And, you know, it's not a knock on grading, it's just... Things have changed in a drastic way. And you have these influencers and all these people chasing the money and flipping. Uh, but it, and, and, and like I said, you're free to do whatever you want. This is America. But it does affect us collectors. So to say that we should have no opinion on it isn't fair either. Because it definitely affects us. How many cars, you know, could you have bought in 2019? You can't even... Think about buying right now. It's affected us. The value of the cards we have, it's affected us in a good way. I mean, you have some good things that have come with the bad. And, you know, I I just think that uh, us collectors should have, should have more say. You know, we have allowed PSA to dictate to us whatever they do. Whatever they do, we support them. We pay them. We do. That's it. If you watch breakout cards videos, you will see all the modern top certified autograph cards. They are grading that are fake. This is becoming a new phenomenon. And so now we got to get the slabs authenticated. We got to get the slabs graded. We have Mike Baker where you send them in and he tells you if it's a good nine or a bad nine. I mean, if it's a 10, what's there to tell you? <laughs> or even if it's a nine, what's there to tell you? Is there such a thing as a bad nine? A nine is perfectly centered and the only flaw can be seen under a loop. And I need Mike Baker to tell me that it's a, uh, <laughs> it's a nice nine on a vintage card. This is, this is, I mean, this is where we're at. And that's why I say we're, we're starting to collect slabs instead of cards. And I don't mean raw cards. I mean, like the card that's in here, you know, uh, and, and you're not getting the card. I, I don't know. You're like, you're getting the slab. Double. And if, if we have to, uh, uh, if we have to authenticate these slabs, why are we sending them in? Why, why, why do we have slabbed cards? If they're, if, they're, if they're grading and authenticating fake modern day tops autograph cards, what can we trust anymore? What can we trust anymore? It's, uh, I don't know, it's kind of bringing me down. It's kind of bringing me down. And, and what I don't want to see and what I don't like seeing is people at odds, us collectors, fighting over grading or raw or whatever who cares it's your collection you can do whatever the heck you want you know i always found it funny that if psa won't grade it some people don't want it you know if it's some oddball thing who cares they don't have to have it what's important to them doesn't have to be important to me what's important to me doesn't have to be important to them this is that's the wonderful thing about this hobby there are so many card issues and other things to collect, it's unlimited. You can never have everything. So if you want to collect food issues, go ahead. You know, if if you want to consider the T206, the <laughs> T206, <laughs> sorry, the T206 cards, if you want to consider a complete set minus the three big cards, that's your right. It's not true. It's not a complete set. 
but you have every right to consider it complete without those three big cards. It's your hobby. You can do whatever the heck you want. You know, it, it doesn't have to be factual. No one else has to agree. It doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want. And, uh, but we shouldn't be at odds with each other over it. We should not be at odds. I mean, it's, it's almost like, um, you know, that weakens us as, as a group. We're already controlled by everyone. We are controlled by everyone. Everyone comes at us for our money. And whatever it is, we pay it. We pay it. I'm sure there are people that pay more to PSA than they do to buy new cards. And that's okay if that's what you want to do. I'm just saying, like, we are, we are a money stream for this industry. Look how much we have to pay for boxes. And you have, like, Mike Baker taking money to tell you, uh, you know, if it's a good four or a bad four. Because, you, you know, you can't see yourself. Those kinds of things. Everybody's reaching for our money. We have these breakers who go off camera. They go off camera. We have, we're now finding fake, fake unopened boxes. And we're finding boxes that uh, have rep repackaged packs in them. So they were built boxes. And these are being authenticated. And everybody's getting a pass. It's never anybody's fault. And who pays? We pay. Every time somebody scams somebody, it affects you and me when we try to sell our doubles or we want to sell something. Or, you know, we need the money we want to sell. Then we have to go through so much more because now nobody trusts anything. And you're going to have to spend, you know, all these thousands of dollars to get your cards graded because no one will buy them because they're rare, uh, raw. So don't ever think it doesn't affect all of us. Everything, everything is going to affect all of us. And first, I think, you know, we need to always stay united and, uh, and respectful of each other. And I think we need to make our voices heard. Whether that's through magazine articles or videos or going live or interviews or whatever. But I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm tired of being taken advantage of. I just have that on my mind. I, I got a little triggered today. I left a comment on Sports Card Investor's video. It's the first negative or somewhat negative comment I have ever left on YouTube in my entire life. But I'm just tired of these guys hijacking the hobby who know nothing. They, I feel like Jim Cramer. They know nothing. They know nothing. Who pays $10,000 for a box of 1988 Fleer basketball cards? And opens them with latex gloves, like it's like like it's some rare find, like it, because it's all about the grade. It's all about the grade. They want to make sure they get tens, and what do you get? Eight sevens and eights, mostly. And after he paid to grade all those, man, he took a bath. I, but people were, you know, if you're gonna be an influencer in our hobby. I, I, I think you need to, uh, you know, engage with the hobby more. Don't be an island out there. If you don't know what you're talking about, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come to light pretty, pretty damn quickly, let me tell you. Because this community that I know, that I interact with, this is a knowledgeable community. And you ain't going to scam us. And I feel like every day somebody's trying to scam us. And I'm just getting tired of it. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a grumpy old man. Maybe people are going to call me an old Karen. Maybe I'm just in a bad mood. Or maybe, maybe I'm scared. Maybe I'm scared for our hobby. The scammers have affected this hobby in a big way, whether you want to believe it or not. And that's, uh, that's all I have to say about that. Thanks for watching. Oh, and another thing. <laughs> after, after Juan Soto signed that enormous contract, he comes on and, and says, that's the card you should buy. Where was he three years ago? <laughs> like, you have to be a genius to think that Juan Soto might be hot now. 